And he doesn't want to be dictated to by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see how this plays out. But it is an issue for markets. And it'll play out over the next couple but of days. But fair to say that this is not a systemic problem of emerging markets so much as a specific country specific I don't know problem. about that. Mm. I think it that, could be systemic important. for emerging yeah. markets. I for don't emerging think markets. Right. Not for us. Which, but, but that actually leads to potential losses for the we U.S. Never as well. Know if we start broadening out in. the emerging markets, that's going to be a problem for the exactly U.S., I right. imagine. Let's talk Tesla for a second because yeah. the stock obviously has had a wild ride. Reuters this morning is reporting that Tesla's board has not received a financial plan from CEO Elon Musk. Uh, it wants more information about his plans to take this company private. What do you make of the drama this week? He said he, he tweeted out he's considering taking the company private. He said at $420 a share, and he said funding secured. You know, I don't care whether you're a bull or bear uh, on Tesla. This was an asinine move by, by a CEO of a public company. Yeah. You halt the stock. You get the information out there. The SEC is going to look into this. I'm not a securities regulator, and I'm not a securities lawyer, so I, I can't tell you the final well, outcome. Well, the Wall Street Journal reports that yesterday that, that the SEC is, in fact, investigating and what they, went on. Harvey Pitt should. joined me yesterday, and Harvey Pitt said there's absolutely reason to investigate because we need to understand if he actually has the funding. You can't say funding is secure. When you don't have the I don't know where the funding's going to come from because leverage buyout, how does that happen? There's, the cash flow isn't there to service the debt. <laughs> it's got to be an equity deal. Who's going to come in with equity at this point? I'm unimpressed with the Saudi Arabia coming in with $2 billion. They have a long history of coming in at the top of a cycle on something, especially Saudi Sheik. So I'd like to see where this, this goes. I, I think the shorts have a pretty good case here. It looks like that's where the money would come from, right? The Saudis. It, where, it, where's the money going to come from? Yeah, it, it's, you know, there was a joke uh, going around the uh, Twitterverse, uh, which can be very skeptical, saying Tesla coin, right? <laughs> uh, so they were like, maybe that's the only way he's going to secure the funds <laughs> for this, okay. given that they're cash flow negative, right? So it's hard to see the, the fixed income markets will not back this, especially after the debacle that happened with TXU which was the largest buyout ever. So uh, we know without a doubt there's going to be shareholder lawsuits, yeah. right? Regardless, which is going to weigh on the stock too, right? Another distraction for Elon Musk. But the biggest distraction he has is getting his production in line. And so this is a distraction from the actual operations of the company and the morale at the company has been in question before. So now it's going to be, uh, now it's just going to make that problem well, even it's worse. Just, it's just laughable at his, it has complaints about being a public company because he has literally the most patient shareholders in maybe corporate history in terms of the nonsense that they have put up with in terms of what's come out of his mouth, surprising massive losses that were much worse than um, investors ever expected. And the cash burn, right? Right. And that there, um, there was only twice, this is in the journal today, only twice has Tesla made a quarterly profit and both times it was a surprise. But he hasn't been selling profit. He's been selling promise, yeah, right? Promise, and, and he's it's been selling thing. virtue and he's been selling the idea that you are somehow transcending existing technologies to something that's green and wonderful. But, and that's cars, but at the end of the day, cars, no, it's called wait, wait. Ru the rubber meat in the road no, no, and he's got to sell some automobile. Well, he has to sell Not more stock that. to finance the company. I think the fact that the automobiles that he makes are totally silent. Someday, somebody's going to get hit by this speeding, <laughs> absolutely silent, you can't hear it, starting, coming, going vehicle, and that's going to be an enormous There's liability. formidable competitors here. Porsche, yes. BMW, there are all the other they companies have broad distribution networks. They're going to have very formidable vehicles. It's not going to be Tesla's market to own. And, and don't forget, who told us this week, who joined us on the program, that said China is ultimately going to own the EV market, right? That China wants to be number one in the, elect, uh, in the electric vehicle. He was vehicle. just there. Uh, market. So well, he's got problems because of the retaliatory tariff from China. Any vehicles they ship from the United States into China now carry a tariff. And on he them. wants to build a factory there. Does he hand over intellectual property? That'll be interesting. Well, he'll have to if, if he tries to open the factory now. Well, then they might right? get knowledge about financing as well. You but, never know. Well, course. the market didn't believe this deal was going to go through no. anyways, a point that Dagan yeah. made uh, about right. the share price. Yeah, it would have never reached 420. Yeah. Right. Where did it close? It closed at <laughs> let's, 379. Let's take a look at here. Yeah, just it, under 380. Right. On the day that this was announced, so you know, people were like, eh.
Yeah, right. <laughs> Water markets, uh, what do you think, David? Uh, NASDAQ up eight days in a row, longest winning streak in 10 months. Well, we're not going to have it today. Today's the end <laughs> no. of that. that would that, you that, put that. new money to work in stocks today? I, I would. Yeah. Look, at it, if you're not invested in this market, you've missed it. We have 23% year-on-year growth. Now, that's not sustainable, but certainly 10% is. I think it's really the rhetoric that, that surrounds us, uh, surrounding trade. But in the end, that's going to work out. Uh, right now, you're seeing real turmoil in, in China right now. The pain is there. It isn't here. The pain is there. Their market is into well, well into bear market territory at this point. So I think what President Xi will do, he's going to wait for the midterms. He wants to see if uh, the House or Senate flips. If, if it does, he'll view Trump as somewhat weakened from that and he'll feel he'll be in a stronger negotiating position. These stocks in tech, uh, our resident Apple expert here, <laughs> um, Apple and Amazon hitting record highs. We're uh, trapped that's where the growth it. is. We're trapped in Apple. Uh, I mean, it's a, a great, great company, but they only give us a little bit at a, at a time. They really lead in nothing. You know, the 5G is about to come out. Every phone on the planet is going to have it, except Apple. They're going to move into it in about two, three years. You so. know, the problem with Apple is the complaints about the speed when they got into the rift with Qualcomm. So they're not using Qualcomm chips. But this goes back to, are people going to stop spending money on technology? Absolutely not. Are companies going to stop spending money? The reason why Amazon hit a Another all-time high again mm. yesterday, up over 1%, is because the corporate spend in the cloud. You're starting to see yeah. that happen. There's not, they don't have enough capacity. AW, listen, the reason why we get to enjoy these so much is yeah. every app is built on AWS. That's exactly the reason why. So S Spotify, every they use Amazon Web Services. If you and I wanted to start an app, we would use it. Are you worried about what's going to happen in terms of social media? media and a new regulatory environment. I mean, Heather, you've got to be bothered by some of the stories that we've seen recently in terms of social media and the censoring of conservative voices. Does that lead to regulation cutting into margins? Well, there, there is a, a big division on the right. Obviously, there are people who are feeling really furious that uh, they don't get the equal treatment that everyone else gets. And, and, and obviously, so InfoWars is, right, well, <laughs> Info is, is the case that people like to point to to say, well, it's really extremist. But if you look at Prager videos, for example, being unable, 80 of them now, on Google's YouTube are unable to access. And these are educational. There is nothing offensive about them. It, it is an, a living indicator that hate speech quickly devolves into speech I hate because I happen to have a problem with it. Right. Um, so there, the conservatives have long been the voices for allowing freedom of speech. The real question is, are these publishers, should they be allowed to be sued for claiming that groups are offensive when they are not? Right. Um, and none of us wants to see heavy-handed regulation, but we do want to see equal treatment. So as from an investment standpoint, buy or sell on tech? Real quick, David. Uh, buy on tech, not social media. Not social media. Right. Not no. So sell the individual companies, sell Facebook. Tech is still a place to be, David for sure. David Nelson, thank you so much.